why we don't see an industrial revolution in China or in the Roman Empire. And that is because gains from trade, gains from specialization, you know, these things run into diminishing returns. At some point, trade's already there. You are richer, but you're not going to get much more richer because, you know, basically all the trade that can take place has already been taking place. And the best example I can think of that is in our own time. If you look at Europe, okay, so Europe in, you know, in, in 1957 started to integrate, create a single large market. And there were huge gains from that because they started trading and specializing. But you ask yourself, what it, can that go on? And the answer is basically, you know, it, it's the, the gains will be will be will get smaller and smaller because you already exhausted it. The only thing that never has run into diminishing returns, and there's no evidence that it ever will, so who knows, is increases in knowledge. And you know, every time we think, oh, by now it's over, everything that can be invented has been invented. And then, and then all of a sudden, something new pops up on the horizon. You know, the latest thing, the last year, everybody's talking about this artificial intelligence. I can actually make a list of at least 10 areas that don't get the kind of publicity that AI has been getting, which are at least as important, including breakthroughs in material science, you know, right. breakthrough in, in, in molecular biology. I mean, there's, things, yeah. there's things going on that are just mind boggling. I agree. And there's no evidence that this is that this is ever going to run out because as I have argued repeatedly, you know, every individual uh, has obviously a limited on what this brain can produce. True. But society is the union of these individuals and there basically there is no reason to believe that there's ever going to be a limit on what we can and, and are able to do. And so if you want to have not just getting, uh, you, you asked a question about prosperity, and that's what about the level. But of course the historian is interested in the level and in the rate of change. And the rate of change is basically, I think, determined by laws of diminishing returns. And the only area where these laws don't seem to apply, I say seem because who knows, but they don't seem to apply is in the expansion of knowledge. And yeah. what is amazing is that, particularly this is true for the Roman Empire, that there was almost no technological change under the Roman Empire. They were literate, they were smart, they were well organized, but we see almost no change. I mean, if you push me hard enough, I'll come up with some, some example, but it's, it's fairly aware. It's better in China because yeah. particularly in the Song Dynasty, there are some major breakthroughs, but then after 1279, when the Mongols come, it basically disappears. And you know, yeah. by the 1400s, 1500, China has become a technologically static society. And for 400 years, there is no major advances that you can see happening in China. Whereas in Europe, things are getting faster and faster and faster.